Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Real Faction and Goodell. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of the song Gatherfly. Because you are listening to the hottest podcast on the net. I don't care about the other shows or what anyone else says. I am Real Faction, and I was not myself. And uh, now I am. So, and uh, I'm here with uh, Good L and Gay Kid Three. Hi, Woo. how are you all? I, I am doing okay. I'm uh, I'm doing well. I uh, just barely woke up, so I might sound a little bit tired. I don't know. I do want to say I'm Good L, and I do care about the other podcasts on the internet. There are good ones. I've never listened to any of them, but I know that they're good. So I've been told. Anyway, we're we're joined Support here today. Your local podcasters. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're joined here today by Gate Kid Three. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Why don't, why don't you start off by just sort of telling us who you are and what you do? All right, uh, Gate Kid Three. I do art. Switched over kind of primarily to pixel art and pixel animation now. Uh, I sometimes do animation, but even when I do, it's mostly still like kind of just higher sized pixel art rather than just full-on traditional animation uh and that's about it in terms of what i do you mean like higher resolution well yeah higher resolution it's uh because usually i work within 100 by 100 but then if i wanted to make like an animation like i have for uh for pixel day i usually just take a standard resolution and then divide that by four and just kind of work within that so it's still all kind of the same size but still kind of bigger oh cool you gotta do the math. Where does uh, where does your name come from? Because I've got I've got like a head cannon, but I I want to know from you what what your name means. Where you where'd you come up with it? Wait, I want to know the head cannon first. One little lore. <laughs> uh, my head cannon is that gate stands for gifted and talented education, and you're just a huge nerd. <laughs> I mean, that's a great way to keep the guests on the show. <laughs> Thanks I kind of want to. Can we just make that cannon like? Can we? Can I just take that? <laughs> I, I'll, like I'll say that's what it was. Uh, it is part of my last name, and then uh, I was a kid at the time, and I had two older siblings. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, great. That's, great. that's a great way to come up with a username. I like it. I like that. And at no point, like there, are, there have been times where I'm like, man, do I really want to keep this name, Gay Kid Three? But like, I, I kind of like it now. I feel like I can't do anything else. Hey, I was 14 when I came up with the real faction. Don't feel bad. I feel yeah. All right, Weird. so let's talk about let's talk about your art. Cool, that's why I'm here. <laughs> I guess a pretty straightforward beginning question, aside from just who are you, is uh, kind of how did, how did you get into not just pixel art but art in general, and then how did I mean you had said that recently most of your work has been pixel art, so how did you kind of make that transition? What what brought you to doing the art that you do? Well, I'm just kind of for as long as I remember. And honestly, I don't have like a super great memory, but for as long as I can remember, I've always been just kind of doing art. I just really liked drawing and, you know, kind of like the, ooh, this is the phase where I like just kind of not tracing because I never liked tracing. But I was like, I would like look at something and try to like draw it exactly. You know, it was like I had that phase, had the phase where I would try to like do portraits, but they were never like that good. But they were good enough to where people would be like, oh, my God, look at that. Look at that kid. Then there was the anime phase. And the anime phase went on, and it went on, and it's still kind of there, but not really. Then I was finally able to get into digital art, which is where I stayed for a while. I was able to get a drawing tablet, kept going with that for a while. Uh, and then I dabbled in pixel art because I thought it was kind of cool. And then, uh, like, I dabbled with it a little bit. But then at one point, I got, like, really inspired by a particular artist. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, Mike Pryor? The creator of Pixel Logic. Oh, Pixel Logic. Okay. Yeah, the creator of Pixel Logic. I really liked his animations because he did a lot of just like really nice and really smooth pixel animations. I'm like, wait, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know it could look that good. So I dabbled with it and I just kept working with it. And then over time, I just started liking it a lot more. And I always wanted to do animation, but I'm kind of like not super good at traditional animation. But then Pixel Art kind of came really naturally because I could take what I knew from Pixel or from traditional animation like the principles and i could apply it in a lot in a way that's a lot easier for me to understand so i just kind of kept rolling with that and now i'm here and it just kind of took over everything else 
That's kind of wild to me because personally, I think of pixel art as being more difficult than uh, than say like flash animation. Because, you have that patience. I've done it myself. Yeah, because there's oh. there's so much more care that goes into every literal pixel. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's precision. So much more constrained that you have to make. I mean, not just sacrifices, but you have to make really conscious decisions about where you put again individual pixels. It's it seems to me like so. I I've been a fan of your work for a long time. Uh, and then the most, the most recent uh, pixel day, you posted bit by bit, which just completely blows me away. I do not understand how something like that could be possible. It's such a such an in depth and just like like it's just bizarre to me that anybody could do that. So it's it's funny to me to hear you say that you find pixel art easier when <laughs> it's kind of a marvel what you're able to do with it. Well, it's weird because I'm the same way. Like I tried doing like regular stuff. I'm like, I suck at drawing, but something about, I don't know what it is. I'm, I don't know. I can't tell you, but for some reason I just, you know, with pixel art, I looked up tutorials and it just crushed and down to such a simplistic way. I don't know. For me, it was easier to learn. So I don't know. If anyone has the answer to that question. See, I've done pixel art too, mostly for for games, because um, uh, all the last three most recent games I posted on Newgrounds have all been pixel art. But I I don't <laughs> I don't do anything even close to the amount of detail and emotive animation that Gate Kid does. So I don't know. You're good at it. It's cool. Thank you. Let's. I yeah. I did bring up Pixel Day there, and uh, I'd like to kind of touch base on that a little bit because uh you have been killing it with pixel day for the last couple of years how <laughs> do you, i'm the one who invented the holiday <laughs> yeah how do you find time to do something like bit by bit like how long did bit by bit take you or or like radish how long did that take hmm. okay so i'm trying to, the first pixel day uh I forget when the post went up. I think it was maybe around like October. And I kind of looked at it and I'm like, maybe this is something I could do because I felt like I could not draw something good enough compared to other people to win that category. I can't really do music, can't really do other stuff. So I'm like, well, maybe I can do like a little animation. And I want to say it took me from October to January, but it was mostly done within those, within that final month was most of it. Cause a lot of it before it was just trying to like fiddle together a song and then thinking of like the concept which was just a pun and then so i guess it was like in between a month to two months to like get that done and the same thing happened the next year i'm like okay i'm gonna start it early and i'm gonna do it and then it happened last minute again (laughs) and then for this year i was going to do another radish themed thing but then nothing was clicking and i'm like ah i'm upset but i still want to do something and then i came up with this other idea and had to scramble i literally got this one done the day of so it's like oh wow it's a lot of last minute grinding because i paced my time out very badly well you do a, a good job because i didn't even think it was i thought you took longer on it that's pretty <laughs> it's pretty impressive oh well there was technically like a lot of cheating would be bleh, with bit by bit because well cheating the reason i did the sprite thing was because again it's like just making like a simple looping sprite that i'm going to use for a particular segment was a lot easier to me than full-on animating it even though the animated bit like the you know kind of the roll into the the spreading out the arms that's my favorite bit of it (laughs) favorite bit but uh (laughs) but it was a lot easier to just be like okay uh let me try to mimic this shovel knight style and then this sonic style and then the mario and then putting them all just in places to use that ended up being a lot faster so it worked out oh cool that's that's pretty uh it's a pretty useful tip there. Yes, cheat always. I wouldn't call that cheating. I mean, that's just working smarter not harder, you know. Short yeah, time. like kind of like how artists um like they would some would call it cheating, but I would call it effective and smart like using layers um in their drawings so that you don't have to be like oh man i gotta restart this all or i gotta erase all this and reshade it no you have layers so that you can put stuff behind that thing and there and so it's a lot faster to you know and i remember when artists didn't even have that like uh and you can't even do that on paper this is digital art you know and it's so it saves so much time so it's it's more like a shortcut is what you want to call it so what you would call your method is like a shortcut which what is really layers? handy. I do all of my art in MS Paint. Oh no! Uh, well, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wanted to get a question in because uh, Goodell already stole a couple of my questions that I had written. <laughs> <Sorry. down>, so, uh... <laughs> no, you're fine. I mean, it's fine because we, you know, like-minded, right? 
get like-minded. So my one of my questions is, you know, since we're talking about your art, actually, while we're going into the Pixel Day, I had a Pixel Day question also. What inspired you to come up with the idea for a radish as a main character and all of those random ideas it's so creative like the way you made it into like this sequence of random yet interesting events but what in the world did you smoke or not smoke to uh come up with all of that well first of all i don't smoke smoking is bad don't smoke kids kind of it's gonna be like anticlimactic like the like like with my username it's just i thought it would be funny it was a pun i was like huh rad radish more like rad I love puns. And I, I love I puns. Just, so I took that and I'm like, well, how far can I stretch that? For, it was going to be originally, at first it was just going to be like regular shades. And then it was going to be like this cool looking futuristic visor or like those like really colorful shades. But I'm like, no, I think it'll be funnier if it's like the little, I don't know what those kind of glasses even are. I don't know. <laughs> the, the hipster shades. I was like, you know what? Those are kind of cool. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. And then it was just kind of so a. You're like picking the, out the style of glasses for your radish. <laughs> yes and then from there it was just how far can i stretch this what's considered cool i'm like uh what's rad skateboards backwards caps the internet video games i was really straining my <laughs> you brain know what, I feel it like reminds were... me of? <laughs> what it reminds me of um some of these commercials i've seen in the 90s like the uh what was it um not the raisin brand but the 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 trio of raisins that sing like what were they from what cereal were they from that wasn't raisin band right that was something Weren't else. they like the california I forget, it, was, it was just like a brand of raisins i'm pretty sure right california yeah the raisins. california raisins yeah 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 it reminded me of the commercials with the california raisins and uh they had like the shades and they sang and they had like these gloves and it was just all wacky and it granted it wasn't like 2d animation it was like you you know stop motion but it was still like it reminded me of like those days yeah i was trying to go for just a kind of basic oh this is cool aesthetic and then with the second one i'm like well what how can i go from there and it's like well they're in the internet kind of so i was trying to do something with that i could have did more but that one kind of got more hurt by being pressed for time than the first one so there's a section of it that, there's just like a lot of there were a lot more shortcuts in that one i, I would say oh okay I want to I want a uh, radish skateboarding game and I want to see like that just plastered on the side of an arcade cabinet just that that cool artwork of the radish just grinding down the rail. Oh, that would be amazing. It would be cool. I guess that's my brand now, radishes. I've never even had a radish. I've never eaten one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fraud. What are some of your favorite drawings, like the ones that you're most proud of, if you like have favorites, and can you like tell us the story behind them? Why is it corn oh boy. dog? Uh, mm. oh, corn dog is a good one, but it's not one of my favorites. Okay, let's see. So in terms of one of my, like my favorite draw, hmm. one, one of my two favorite drawings that I made was, one was like that pink princess with the green hair I did, I think at the start of last year or the year before. I forget when I did it. But that was like a drawing that I really liked because it was like for a while where I was like not liking my art. But then I drew that and I'm like, oh, this one actually came out really nice. So I really like it. It was very flashy. I really like the Celeste painting or digital painting that I did. I don't know if you know of that one either. The face yourself? Yeah, that one. Because yeah, that's a pretty good one. That was me just taking a leap. I was just trying to I just started trying to learn how to understand painting kind of digitally. So but then I just kind of wow. jumped into it. I had water that reflected. So it's like it's a cone, but it has to go downward because it's reflecting the upward stuff. So I really liked doing that one in terms of pixel art. Uh, That's really good. I don't know. My favorite pixel art would be because there's a lot of stuff I made that I've liked. Like obviously corn dog is a thing, but it's not. It's honestly not my favorite. I feel like it could have been better, maybe. I don't know. How about Grape? I talked about Grape on ah, grape. a couple of crickets one time, because it's just... <laughs> I love the idea of, like, a pixel art still life. <laughs> oh, that was because of uh, Pixel Dailies. They were doing... That's why I was trying to do the daily prompts for, like, a month. And the first one I did was, like, Grape. I'm like, yes. <laughs> this is my... Problem. I'm I'm just looking through a lot of your art, and I really like... Uh... Well, I like the pokey animation for one, but for, I also like the Oni display because it's, I don't know, it's its like got different colors. It's really good with the shading. I just, I don't know. Are you talking about Japanese the mask? Demon mask. Oh, yeah. so that one was because, um, so like a lot of things, or well, not a lot of things. I guess this goes back to Radish. The song, I, I made the song first, 
Yeah, that, that's an eventual question I wanted to get to. <laughs> that art for the Oni mask, that was also the byproduct of me making this like song. I don't know if I ever, ever posted it. I might have. It's, it's you, got, you got a yeah. song called Oni. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, it's that one. Yeah, I did that. And I wanted to do an animation for that. And I think that was almost what I decided to try to do for Pixel Day. But I'm like, no, I don't know what I'm doing for this one. So I'm going to just push that aside. Let's talk about music. What a what's your yeah, what's your that's my next question. Uh, so there's a website called Beepbox, and I just kind of slap my hands on a mouse until it makes music. So you just kind of went basically, and then I came oh, out God. with a like a radish melody, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. So it's usually just I will mess around. Most <laughs> times, I will make something I absolutely do not like but sometimes i get a golden gem and no radish was not that golden gem because i actually do not like the original radish song you don't like the original radish one i like that song there is oh, i like there... that song it was catchy it's kind of catchy but i don't know it's like a kind of irrigating to me now when i listen to it uh there is something I no, have it's still made. still stuck in my head. There is something I have made that I do really like. I don't think I posted that one at all. I might have posted it. I think it's in a Twitter post and an Instagram post, but like not in. I didn't post the song because I still kind of want to mess around with it. But it's a plant. It's a song about plants. I called Germinate because I kind of had an idea for a plant game that I want to eventually do. And it, I don't know, in my brain, yeah, it's I'm not, not so good. So yeah, it's not there. Uh, maybe I'll have to like... Post it in the chat at some point. I don't know. Post it on Newgrounds. I look forward to seeing it. It's kind of neat. I was playing around with Beatbox for a second. It's uh, yeah. That's cool. I didn't know that existed. Yeah, neither did I. And then I found out. So I'm like, oh, cool. I can now make stuff. Wait, what's the link to that? Uh, it's beatbox.co. I guess just a heads up about that. It's like Beep the URL is kind of how the music is stored. So as you make changes, the URL is just going to get really long. Weird. That's a weird way to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. I don't understand it, but it's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So obviously pixel art has a uh, very close relationship in history with, with video games. I'm curious if there are any particular video games that you would say sort of inspire your, your style. Hmm. So when I make pixel art, I guess I was kind of thinking of it more individually. I never like thought, oh man, I really like the pixel art in this game. I think that appreciation started coming after I started getting into it. So it was more of just like, Ah, uh, I am making tiny pixel-based art. But uh, if I had to say stuff now, I don't know if these are like directly inspirations or if they're just stuff I like. But I really just love Shovel Knight and the Messenger. They're my two like favorite games. But it's like I don't think there's any kind of influence in the art style of the game in my work. I think most of my inspiration comes from various artists. Makes sense. Yeah. So on it's that note, who are who are some of who are some of your favorite artists then? Okay, so uh, the main two, I already said one, creator of Pixel Logic, uh, Michael Farr. I feel like I'm saying that wrong every time I say it because I never say it out loud. And then. Farr. And uh, another name I can't say. Uh, Mo- 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 uh, Wait, are you talking about Moowling? Moowling, yes. Moowling's art has inspired me a lot in terms of figuring out how colors work. Because even though Pixel Logic existed, I, I didn't. Art. Yeah, I didn't get. Uh, I didn't kind of start getting a grasp of understanding colors until I looked at their art and how stuff works. Those are the main two. I can't think of any others off the top of my head. That's cool. Well, going into the what's your favorite stuff um, from like outside inspirations. Well, whether these inspire you or not, well, I know sometimes they do, but just in general, I guess the question is, what are some games that inspired you? But also, what are some of your favorite? pixel games of the platforming forming era of consoles and computers like even if they didn't inspire you okay well my top two of all time like i was saying was shovel knight speci- specifically shovel knight specter of torment that one is my favorite and i love it and everyone should go play it and listen to the music and then the messenger play it listen to the music i would say don't watch a trailer it makes it more fun if you don't watch a trailer you just play through that game another kind of Another indie game, uh, Iconoclast. That game, uh, I think I won it from like a Newgrounds based contest and I played it 
and I thought that was really great. The art in that game is also phenomenal, so that is also another. I don't know how to pronounce another pixel artist whose name I don't know how to pronounce. Don't know how to pronounce his name, but his art and pixel art is like really phenomenal. It's a good game. I thought Octopath Traveler was cool. Never played it though. I want. I've been wanting to play that. I heard it was like not super great. I don't know, but I kind of wanted to. Play really? It. I think there's a sequel that was just announced, wasn't there? I think. Or that was another game, maybe. That was bravely default. Maybe I don't remember. No, I think there was another game in the vein of that that was, there was a sequel. I don't know. I'll think of it later. Oh, wait. Speaking of sequels, uh, there's a prequel for The Messenger that's being kickstarted right now. It already made its goal, but like that also looks like it's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited oh. for that. Uh, I really like RPGs. Cool. I like story-based games. Celeste is another like really beautiful game. Celeste. Celeste. We just talked about that one. Oh, cool. Yeah, the one that you, like, the, the drawing you were really proud of. Oh, you're talking about that. Yeah, we just talked about, yes, that. I thought you meant you talked about it in a different podcast, whatever. I mean, I should have known because, like, you do, like, this really good picture. I'm like, oh, yeah, obviously. On the note of games, no. y'all should talk about NG Zero Hour. Oh, you know what? I actually had a question about that. That was actually my next one. But before we get into that, I would like to also mention uh, Shovel Knight. I thought they were done with all the expansions, but they just came out with another uh, DLC story. I don't know. Are they separate games or are they just expansions at they're, this point? I think they're like... They're separ- They're DLC, but they're also separate campaigns, so you can buy them separately. But then also... Yeah, another campaign then, yeah. They got a new campaign that came out. I can't remember what it's called, but it was like the King of... King of Cards. The King of Cards, yeah. It's because way oh. back when they did a um, they did a poll for like who are your top three favorite of the like Order of No Quarter, and we'll make like separate DLC campaigns about them. And they did Plague Knight. Isn't that number four? Well, no, because Shovel Knight was the main game, and then they did Plague Knight, Specter Knight, and then finally King of Cards. So I think this is the last one, but now they're doing other things, I guess. Uh, oh, I thought this was like the fourth thing, and I think I heard they were making a sequel or something, but I don't know. Uh, they're doing like a, there's, there are two spinoff Shovel Knight games that are in the works right now. And they did oh, Shovel Knight okay. Showdown, which is kind of like another, a separate free expansion to Shovel Knight. Oh, yeah. The battle game one. So. Oh, yeah. Cool. That's all I know. Um, so going to the zero hour question that was actually next on my list, funny enough. So for those who don't know, Mr. Gate Kid here back in 2015, I can't remember if I recruited you or you came to me, but I think I was seeking out pixel artists and I I think it was that I stumbled on your work and I was like, oh, you make some good work or or somehow we ended up getting in contact with each other. And then like you made some some of the stuff for uh, new ground zero hour for the uh demo and i recently it's funny because yesterday i actually dropped a april fool's video saying hey the full game's coming out april 2nd no no i'm just kidding but the game is actually back in the works and i've got like a programmer i'm working with and we're taking our time so it is in the works and it would be cool to have you back if you ever wanted to do any more work for that <laughs> but um but anyway the, the question related to that game okay so here's the question have you, besides Newgrounds Zero Hour, have you done any other work for any games outside of Newgrounds, and do you plan on doing any work for games in the future period? Okay, so uh, do I plan on doing anything with games in the future? I want to be able to, like, do or, like, like make or work on, like, a pixel art indie game. Uh, that's, like, kind of what I hope to do eventually. But then also in terms of projects, I feel like I am notoriously bad at at working on projects. I want to get better at it, but I feel like I'm just not, I, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to out myself like that, but I don't, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> it just usually doesn't work out as well as it could. And I'm trying to like figure out what about that is the problem. But, uh, I have technically worked on several things. I don't think any of them ever went anywhere. They're still going places, but like I've made maybe like a single asset for a thing or maybe like two or three things and then that's kind of about it so not enough to like be like oh man i'm super contributing like even with Newgrounds zero hour i only made like i think i made a chair uh another <laughs> chair i made like a chair i was tipped over i was really proud of that one uh i think a blackboard well, hey it works and i think the locker i forget i think it was those those things but uh well, hey, you still contributed, and like I, I, I greatly appreciate it because like I still have the assets, so like I still have the stuff from like almost everybody 
and uh, I even have stuff that hasn't been used in the game yet. So it's kind of going to be like a pixel artist collage. And this year I'll be looking for more artists once me and my hopefully permanent programmer, if all this works out, um, he seems to be really dedicated and learning. Um, you know, hopefully this will all work out and we can have like a nice collage of uh, pixel artists because we already have quite a few. I kind of want it to be like a celebration, like a, a mural of a pixel artist, uh, you know, with all these different styles, but it works and it kind of fits in together, kind of representing the pixel art community of uh, of Newgrounds. And it was supposed to be like a pixel day game on release for the first pixel day, but I made the mistake of like rushing it and I didn't realize how long it would take. But um, I'm still really proud of the demo. Like it's got like almost 100,000 plays and like uh, it's like a four and a half star rating or something. We did really well and it's, uh, it's it's a hard game it's a fun game but um you know i i'm really excited to work on it again you know but like i said you know if you if you feel like you're up for it hey you know we're happy to have you but i understand like you were saying hey maybe i have workflow issues trying to figure it out so like that's totally respectable also i might need to make some more chairs then <laughs> <laughs> on the topic of i guess new round zero hour actually you know i will say this i am actually doing something minor related to it really yes so we i did not know this look forward to that i suppose cool when do uh are you able to give us any hints or uh, any idea of when it'll uh when we'll see it well i mean pico day is a thing so i'm gonna like pico day yeah pico okay day. it's not like something spectacular okay. but it's like it's something i wanted to do because of my like minor involvement it was like it it stuck with me Aww. because of my minor involvement <laughs> Oh, well, that that means a lot. Thank you. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's funny because that's kind of a mixture of Pico Day, uh, Pico School, and you know, it's like Pico Day, Pic Pico School, and Pixel Day. It's kind of a a marriage of the two because this is actually uh, for anyone who hasn't played the demo or don't know, this is actually a non-canon universe set one year after the Pico School incident. So this is like an alternate universe, extreme version of like a Pico School type of sequel. That's like it's, like, it's a fan game set in a Newgrounds universe, and it's like a crossover of all the characters, uh, kind of like Newgrounds Rumble was. And I thought it would be cool to kind of explore the land, and uh, so. It's kind of a celebration of Newgrounds and Pico Day and Pixel Day and Pixel Art and, and all that good stuff. Newgrounds. I want more people to come to Newgrounds, so I want this game to bring more people to Newgrounds and play it. All right. Yeah. So we can move on from Engine Zero Hour now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's talk about um, the future for you. you. You'd mentioned that you wanted, you know, you'd like to be involved in some indie game project. You've mentioned that you've got a thing possibly for Pico Day. What, uh, what, else, what are some some things that you see in your future aside from those things or, or what are some like dream projects for you somebody had asked i don't remember who it was but somebody had posted in the uh in the discord at some point that oh, I should be um, looking at that whoops one of their favorite questions for people is uh what their like dream project is if time and money weren't an issue what's what what would be that for you what's oh. if if you, if you could remove time and money from the equation what would you make hmm i have uh, see i have so many ideas if i had to pick one i wouldn't know what to pick but uh because like, i had a game about plants i wanted to make i had a platformer game i had an idea i wanted to make uh there's like an animation do you, do you, I wanted do you programming? To do. no i need to learn <laughs> so that's kind of a <laughs> i need to learn or find someone to help me but like yeah I, I i've tried i learn. hate programming uh it's i took a single computer science class and it made my brain hurt so <laughs> But yeah, it's like I have a Josh is probably going to kill me when, you know, he's listening in. Did you just say you hate programming, sucker? I mean, programming that sounds like cool. Josh. That's definitely a Josh voice. I respect it. It just it's what too big brain for my Oh, he hates brain. it too apparently. Okay. <laughs> and why do you do it? You're so good at it. I don't know. I don't think you're good at it, Josh. You should quit. <laughs> <laughs> I could find someone to help me do it, but then you got to pay them to do that. And it's like, yeah, well, I'm having the same issue. I had the same issue with Newground Zero Hour because finding a programmer was hard and it sucks because the original programmer, I won't get into the details, but we both were kind of in the wrong with some things. We kind of had a falling out and I had apologized to him. And well, I don't know. He doesn't seem to make games anymore. But like I was like, well, how do I find a programmer for free? Because they work so hard and a lot of them do expect payment. And I'm like. 
I don't even have much money to carry my own life right now. So uh, this recent guy, I won't throw his name out there yet because I don't know if this is a definite thing, but he's been really cool. He kind of approached me because he just had a love for the project. And that's kind of a good thing about Newgrounds and collaborations. Like, because when you have people that want to work on games like Nick and Lewis, uh, the, you know, one of our last interviews um, that we did, you know, they just do it for the love of it because they love working with each other. And ultimately, if you want to go that route, you know, I, I'm glad to have people on that really love to do it. And I really wish I could pay them. But at the same time, I can't even I can't even pay myself. I'm not getting paid for this. So, <laughs> you know, this is kind of a volunteer effort just for the, the passion of games. And I would love to get more into that, you know. Uh, so this guy kind of came to me and, and maybe that's what you need to do. Just like either get in the Newgrounds Collaborator uh this is a good time to promote that actually a lot of people forget the newgrounds collaborator exists um if you go to look for that and you be you post like hey i need this or whatever or you look in the forums uh you'll find the you know these great people who would who would love it you just kind of gotta get the right people to vibe with you know and people who are really feeling the project people are like i love this idea and you know so you know, maybe you should do that. You just go to Collaborator and see if you can find some people you vibe with and maybe you'll come across the right programmer. There were a few audience questions from earlier. Oh, I, whoops. I've been looking. Oh, no, 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 no worries. I mean, I, I basically asked all my questions, so I'm done on my end. So I guess we could, like, go to the audience questions. So here, I'll ask a few of these. First of all, why don't you like the Lenny face? That's... Uh, <laughs> oh, should I just go through these all these questions right here really quick? Uh, I can... Um, we won't we won't do all of them okay but. cool uh i mean it's a pretty it's an okay face it's funny haha ha. <laughs> i like it i like uh i like this question about commissions haven't seen many from you but is there anything that you've turned down or particularly enjoyed doing as far as commissions go mm, okay so i i don't like shying away from commissions just because you know money but uh if it's something I feel like I can't do, or if they're asking for, I guess, way too much, well, I guess, yeah, to the point where I feel like I couldn't do it or couldn't do it well, then I'll turn Subway it down. Subway customers. Yes. <laughs> Subway customers. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think I've gotten, I don't think I've gotten any of the, like, the crazy, the crazy kind of people who, uh, you know, ask for something like super out there or even just people who ask for things that I'm not comfortable with. I haven't like gotten that yet. That is not me asking for people to commission me for any of that, but I will say no. <laughs> just like, it's like those subway customers that ask for like everything in the world. I have the lettuce, tomato, and then everything else that you got. And yeah, but I, I've dealt with a couple of those kinds. So I know exactly what you're talking about. I pray to God you don't get those people, but you know what? The great part about it is you can just say no. Yeah. Powerful word to save your ass from a lot of stress. That is, that is true. I like this question. Do you receive any actual criticism on your art? It's hard to imagine people having anything to say beyond being nitpicky. Okay, so, uh, ooh, criticism is an interesting topic for me. Or I guess not necessarily even just criticism, but just people having, like, things to say on my work. Uh, I feel like there are times people have, like, legitimately good stuff to say. I just really want to try to not be like you know bitter about it because it's like i work you know it's like the whole thing it's like oh you work hard on the thing and then you post it and then someone has something to say about it and it's like i want to be able to pull the good out so in terms of have people had things to say i will say yes there are case there are a lot of cases where people do bring up valid things even if it's i don't know even if it's something that i don't agree with it's still like valid it's just not something i would implement i don't know there are cases where people get nitpicky or like say things that like don't really add anything like with the Pokemon thing specifically um like there were things people said that w would have made the animation more interesting but uh I'm not gonna call it a person but calling out Reddit <laughs> on Reddit <laughs> people just kind of mainly was like damage values wouldn't work like that or like you need to think more about the type advantages and it's like it would have been cooler if you like did this with the because of <laughs> like Squirtle should have died instantly because that's how it works in the game. And it's like, well, yeah, but because <laughs> like a lot of times they weren't wrong, but it's anime okay, logic. I'm yeah, gonna just whatever. tell you, Reddit will tear you apart. 
Reddit will tear you apart. I know this. There's just a lot of people that are overly technical. So you have these overly technical edge lords on Reddit, and that's maybe you find nice people on Reddit. But normally, like when it comes to stuff like that, they are like some of the nitpickiest people on the internet. When we had Wavetro on here, he specifically said, "Do not use Reddit to promote your work because exactly." Why? <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> learning that. <laughs> Exactly. Um, one thing I will just say to chime in on this uh, topic, when it comes to criticism, it's good when people are constructive. Um, it just depends. Like, because I've had, I think there was a few times I had people like say zero stars. I didn't like it or whatever. And a lot of people just don't seem to get the function of you know, the review or what a review is. Mm -hmm. And you can just imagine like Rolling Stone. I didn't like it. And it, that's just like the whole review. <laughs> And, you know, but but I know what you're saying, because I, I used to have some insecurities about my music and I feel better about my music than I used to. But, you know, there were just times where people would they would sometimes be genuinely helpful, but I would still feel like it's more so what a lot of people don't realize is they'll get mad or they'll get like hurt. But it's really because they like they're upset with themselves because they they're hard on themselves, because when it comes to people like what I used to do, I was a perfectionist. And I used to be really, really hard and critical of myself. I'm like, dang it, I really love doing this, but I could have done so much better. And and it just kind of mentally ripped me apart because of that insecurity, because I felt like, you know, I messed up and I didn't know what I was. I wasn't confident. You know, I, I felt like I didn't know what I was doing sometimes. But ultimately, as I became more comfortable with my work and got more support and just I learned to like not even worry about that, just have fun with what you do. And along the way to just kind of realize, oh, these people are trying to help me. These people are trying to um, guide me in the right direction, unless they're absolutely being like a dick about it. And then you just, you know, say, no way, Jose, I'm not I'm shutting that shutting those vibes out. Um, you know, I don't subscribe to that. I subscribe to, uh, you know, my friend's YouTube channel and all the people who support me, you know kind of like that i don't know where i'm going with this but you get the idea that reminds me of a time i got a i guess review comment whatever on something i made where they i think they were like really vague about it. they're just like oh something's like really off about it or like something's whatever and then i kind of got defensive i was just like oh yeah well what is it and then they just sent me a message and they're just like the, the left hand is backwards and then i felt really bad <laughs> so it's like oh man uh but yeah i feel like even if the, all i'm gonna like last thing i'm gonna say about like criticism I just wish, even if people are going to say something that I'm going to take bad, I wish they're just clear right from the start. Like, instead of just saying, I don't like this, I hope they at least say, I don't like this specific part of it, or I don't like this, so that I at least know what people don't like, even if they're not going to elaborate. I don't know. I just like to at least know where I, what I can take from something. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Anything, well, uh, anything else? Yeah, I think that does it. Do you have anything that you want to plug? Oh, well. Uh, any plug promotion Ooh, okay uh i mean plugging m myself my ko kofi kofi whatever kofi uh you know you know i've learned it's actually called coffee but it's yeah, just I spelled like kofi. kofi i like kofi though yeah i call it kofi but it's just easier but uh yeah my kofi you can like support me if you want you can commission me if you want but if you want to commission me i would probably recommend just messaging me or like dming me versus yeah doing it through ko-fi because ko-fi does have like a thing where you can commission but i'm still like trying to figure out what i want to do with that because i with animation i do things very vaguely i'm just like okay tell me what you want and then i'll just like throw up a price or whatever based on what it is but then ko-fi is like no you have to pick a solid number and i'm like eh, i don't like that but yeah that's yeah that's mostly it i am on other social media i'm on twitter i'm on deviantart but i don't really post on deviantart tumblr don't really post that often on tumblr don't really make stuff to post on YouTube, but I have a YouTube channel. There's terrible stuff there, but you can you can. <laughs> the links see... will be in the description. Yeah, maybe don't link <laughs> this it. upload. <laughs> maybe don't link the YouTube. Just just sh if they want to find it, they'll get on get to it on their own. Oh well, wait, what's on the YouTube? Uh. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to to delete stuff, so a lot of stuff I posted is just still there, and it's not super great. I'm kind of curious about this. <laughs> Do do it later. Just look into it later. Just don't. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of interesting because I'm I made Pixel Day and I'm like interviewing like the top Pixel Day animator, which is kind of cool. Like I think you win every year or almost every year, but I'm I think you have one like every single year because you're like one of the you're one of the few actually makes the animations, but you're also like one of the best. Thank you. I 
enter yeah, because I, mean... I have a good chance to win, I guess. But at any point, <laughs> oh, that's another thing about it. So the, uh, I think it was the, was it the first year? No, I think it might have been the first or the second year. Um, that was like literally a day before or no. Yeah, I think literally a day before, um, two people posted amazing pixel animations, but they didn't tag it with pixel day. So I felt kind of like, yeah. I felt, I, I didn't even feel like, I, I was like, cool, I won, but it was just like, oh, these are like really good. It was, um, K-Nomatics, uh, what was it? Black Crystal? Did I miss those? It was like Black Crystal. No, they weren't like tagged with pixel day. So like they weren't put in there and they were put in the day before. They were just like things uploaded. And, uh, what was it? Rob Pulse? or paul robertson i forget i forget which one uh oh paul wait the paul robertson entered no he didn't enter but the day before two animations came out one was like black crystal by kinematic i think they're called and then uh the, oh, the two one that. the ones about the yeah. elf and the dwarf that was oh, like yeah. a collaboration wait, project. were they meant for pixel day though i don't think they were meant for pixel day but the fact that they came out like the day before pixel day i felt like oh no I'm like, oh, oh no, this is like, my submission. <laughs> yeah, but then because I guess they maybe they didn't want to enter in the pixel day. They're like, maybe they're just like, oh, this, I don't know. Well, you know, there's a lot of people who still don't know about it, which kind of boggles my mind. So some people are like, I'll like sometimes message people who are artists and like, hey, it'd be cool if you're in a pixel day. You, you do a good job with this art on, on Twitter. Every, almost every year I like try to recruit people and I've I've tried to recruit people like to come to Newgrounds and, and like submit their stuff, but also stick around because it's like thriving with the pixel art community. So I wanted to build more of the pixel artist community on Newgrounds to show them, hey, this is a community that cares and they'll take good care of you and all that it's a good place to post you know and a lot of people have come for pixel day which is really cool but there's still a lot of people on Newgrounds who don't know about it which kind of really surprises me because i think we've had like five five of them now and the first one was i think 2016 and uh, there are a lot of people who do enter for pixel day but they forget to tag pixel day 2020 and it's unfortunate sometimes they'll do a day late even like and they'll think oh it's today but it's actually the day before but it sucks because i i miss out on like stuff that people work really hard on and there is a lot of stuff that i have to go through like it takes me hours to get through submissions like every year but i just feel bad for the people who forget to tag and i try to like my hardest to just give people a reminder hey tag it you know it's pixel day 2021 20, next year so yeah dang we just had like a long drawn out conversation about pixel day because I, I i like pixel i like pixel oh anything you want to add good um no i think uh, i think we're good to wrap it up there this has been fun thank you gate kid for being on the show uh it's nice you thank on. you for having me i was like whoa i was like whoa they, they want me on the podcast oh yeah someone posted in the uh discord the animation i was talking about elvis and dimmy i'll have to check it out after this yeah it's really it's like top notch we can go ahead and wrap it up there thanks everybody Woo. see you next time bye later later <laughs> thank you for listening to the new grounds podcast this show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Goodbye.